Hi, this is Paula from Alanda Craft and today I'm going to show you how to use the Brother Scan and Cut Canvas software. Now this is an online software so you have to be logged on to the internet to use it. You can't download it to your, to your computer. Now this is the main page that you come to whenever you want to log in. So if you've never signed up before, just come in here and click on New and create a new account. So once you've created your account, you'll be able to log in here. We'll have the link to this page at the bottom of this video, under this video. So just log in now. Okay, once you've logged in, this is the screen you're going to see. So you can see up here you've got two tabs, Canvas Project and My Projects. Okay, the Canvas Projects are the, are the Brother Scan and Cut ones they include for you for free. So you can play with those, they're really great. Over here you've got My Projects and when you click on that, I won't click on it now, we'll show you later. That shows you all the projects you've actually saved. Okay, so you've got two options to go with. On both of those tabs, you'll see this, this little icon here. So basically, it says there, create a new project. So you click on the little plus button, and that gets you into the main screen here where we're going to be creating things. So you can see you've got a Brother Scanner Cut mat here on the screen, which is great. It shows you, gives you an idea of where you're at by having this on the screen. But you can change the look of this by coming up to view here and just selecting. You can unselect that and you can see you've just got a white screen here. Now I prefer to show the mat, so I'm going to click keep that one selected there. You can also make this mat bigger or smaller by just scrolling up here. See, you click on that and you can zoom in and out, so that's nice and easy. Or you can come over here to view, and you see you've got different selections here which you can go with as well. So there are your two options. You can also change from inches to millimetres if you want, depending what country you're in and what you use. I prefer inches, even though we're in Australia and we use metric. I still like to use inches. Okay, so that's the main screen you see here. Now over this side you'll see some patterns, and these are all the patterns that the Brother Scan and Cut puts in here for you to play with. So you've got basic borders, logo, and text. So you just simply click on one of those, and you'll see all the shapes show up there, which is really awesome. So this, these are great. We've got borders here. We've got logos different options for different events and so forth, and also text. And we'll be going through text in another video. We'll show you how to do different things with text. So today we're just going to focus mostly on shapes. Okay, so I'm going to click on the basic there, and I'm going to choose a shape. So when you click on anything on this side, it'll immediately pop up over here. So if I click on there, you'll see it pops up there. I can also click and drag. If I click and drag with my mouse, I can click it and place it into, into wherever I want. I'm just going to delete that one though. So I've got my shape here. Now I can move this around by simply clicking on it and dragging it around. Okay, so if I click and drag, you'll see it move around there. Now if you have problems with clicking, sometimes I've noticed you can click in the center here and it doesn't highlight the shape. If that happens, all you need to do is come over and just see how my cursor is an arrow at the moment. If I move it over the line here, you'll see as soon as it hits that line, it, cre it creates a little cross here. I click on that now and drag, I'll be able to move it. Now I can also rotate this by just simply clicking on, you notice this little icon here, this little green circle? If I click and drag, I can turn that around anywhere I want. And if I hold the shift key down, what it does, you'll see what it does when I click on the shift key, it locks it into place. So if I'm turning it, it'll simply click, click, click. So it maintains a perfect straight, you know, parallel line or horizontal line. I'll just get that round back to the top there. Okay, now I can also um, create a size, change the size of this shape. So I can do that by dragging, clicking in the corner. You can see at the bottom here we've got the size that it is at the moment. If I click and drag, you'll notice that sizing change. If I drag from the corner, what it does is it maintains the aspect ratio. So it keeps the height, the height and the width exactly the same as I do that. If I wanted to stretch it out a bit, I could go from the middle here and stretch it out and seam from the bottom here and stretch it out. I'll just undo that to get it back to its perfect shape there. I can also change the size of this by making sure it's highlighted. So I'll just click to highlight and coming up here to this option up here, show properties. If I click on that, you'll see I get all these size and angle shapes 
here. So I'll move this over here. And if I just click on that plus button, I can just simply change the shape doing that. You'll notice as I change it here, we've got 475. It automatically changes this side to 475. And same again, 5, 5. The reason it's doing that is because I've got maintain aspect ratio checked. So it's always going to do that while this one's checked. If I wanted to have a specific height and width, I could change that now. I can actually highlight and type in whatever size I want there, or I can simply keep pressing the plus button. You'll see this doesn't change at all over here, which is great. I can just keep doing that, and then I can change this one down and do what I like there. So it just keeps changing that shape to whatever I want. I can also change the angle of this. You know, before we showed you, you can click on that and turn it. But here I can get a specific angle if I wanted to by clicking these. Get a, and if I do 2, 5, I can even do that 2, 4, 6. There you go, and I can create a specific angle for this. I can also fill this with a colour if I wanted to. And also the outline. This is the outline, so I can change it to another colour. You can't really see that there, but the outline, if I take that fill out there, you can see the outline is now in pink. So they give you the different options there. Also here I can change this to a cutting. Depending on what you've got, if you're using the pen tools, you can change this to a drawing line only if you wanted to. So the Brother Scanner Cut would only draw that line and not cut it. I can change it to a cutting line only. Or I can have, have it set at both, which is the default. Another option which is really awesome is I can change this to a dashed pattern which means I can create scoring lines and you might want to check out our scoring line video for this but this will show you the basics just make sure your shape is selected and you come here and you can select any scoring line you want there you go so that'll cut dash, a dashed line in there which makes it great for doing specific things if you want to create um, cards and different things like that so there are your different options for that I'm just going to create a different shape I'm going to delete that one just come and grab this one here to show you the other things you can do here. So if I have that selected, I come up to edit and I can flip and, and um, flip this one horizontally or vertically. So if I go vertical, you can see it changes it there and come back again and I can do that for the horizontal as well. Okay, now what do we want to do now? I'm going to bring in another shape because I'm going to show you some how to weld quickly weld and, and subtract and delete things. So I'll just pick another shape here. This one will be fine. Bring that there. I'm going to bring that one over. Okay. Now the first thing you can do with this is you can actually group these together. You see at the moment when I click on one, it moves out of the way and, and away from this one here. If I wanted to keep these two together, I can just group them. So if I click in the corner and drag with my mouse to highlight everything, and then I come up here to edit, and this one here is group. So I click on that, and now if I click away and click back, you'll notice they're all selected. So I can move this around now and they stay together, which is really good. Okay, I'm just going to undo that. Now undo is up here. I'm just um, Command Z on my Mac, but if you want to undo, up here you've got the undo buttons, and that's the redo button. So anytime you make a mistake, this is a good one to come to. Just simply click undo. Alright, so now they're separated again. Now I'm going to show you the different welding options. Now the trick with welding, as with grouping, is what we just did is to make sure everything is highlighted that you want to weld. So again, click and drag, highlight everything, and come up here to edit. And you see you've got these four options down the bottom here. These are great, I use these all the time. So you've got a weld option here. First of all, let's try that one. We'll click on that. We'll see what happens. You see, that's what weld does. It actually welds it all together into one shape. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to undo. Okay, and highlight everything again. And we'll try the second option there. So edit. And this one here is the divide option. So if I click on that, and you, it may look like there's nothing happening there. But if I click and drag this one away, see what happens. And then you've got another shape here. See how awesome that is? I mean, you can do so many different things with this type of thing. So it just separates all those shapes. Okay, I'm going to undo again. And click and drag to highlight everything. And we'll try the third option. This one is the 
remove overlapped. So let's click on that. Okay, and what it does is remove the overlapped. So anything that was overlapped over on top of this one has been removed. So I'll undo that one now and select everything and we'll try the final one, which is the subtract option here. And there we go. So it subtracts whatever's the one that's sitting on top of the other, it will subtract um, the shape out of it. So that's really awesome what you can do with this. It's a really um, you really want to get in here and just play with those options. Just choose a few shapes and just try different things because it really is great. Now I'm going to show you how to import files into the Scan and Cut Canvas software. You've got two options up here to do that. You've got this option here which is image tracing and you've got this one here which says import SVG, DXV, FCM file. So we'll start with image tracing. So if I click on that one you get a little pop-up and it's asking me to choose a file from my computer. Okay, so the type of files you want, you see it tells you here, you can use a JPEG, GIF, GIF, depending on how you want to pronounce it, PNG, BMP, and they have, must be files of less than 5 megabytes. Not everything will work with this, it's, it's, it can only do its best at, at, at figuring out a, a particular shape in your image. The best type of images to use are ones like silhouettes are great, or things that have got a distinct outline. So I'll show you one now. If I go click on Choose File, and here I've got this one of this, these butterflies. You can see they've got a distinct background, uh, background. They've got a white background and a distinct shape. So it should be able to find this, but we will see. You can see it's come up there. You've got different, out, different options here. I recommend you play with these. If you find an image hasn't worked the first time with just these defaults, then it's worth clicking on Color and even remove background and play around with these maximum number of colors. I'll go into more detail with this sort of thing in, a, in another video, but these are just giving you the basics, but it's worth playing around with those options. Okay, you can ask also preview. You see you've got a preview button here. If I click on that, it's actually going to show me the outline, if it's picked up the outline of this shape or not. And there you go, you see how it's picked up absolutely everything in there. I, I may not want that. See, see I've selected color. I don't necessarily want all those inside. All I want is the outline. So if I click on outline and go preview again, you can see there now it's just done an outline of the shape. You can faintly see the blue outline. That's awesome. So that's worked pretty well. So if I go OK now, it'll bring that into my scan and cut canvas mat here. Okay, there you go, look at that, that's pretty good. You can see here the um, feelers on the butterfly, not too great. And then this is the thing with this, it's not always going to be perfect, it'll depend on your image. So, but to me that's great, I'd probably just delete those and draw those in anyway if I was going to use this. So you can see it's put them into two separate little things now, which is really good. So that's great. So that's the image tracing option. I'm going to create a new project now, so that's this button here. And I'm going to leave the page. Right, so now I want to try the SVG option here. So if I click on that, again it wants me to choose a file from my computer. So, and you've got different options of what you can import here. Most people know the SVG. If you're a crafter, you probably know the SVG files. They're great. They're sort of in a format that's it's ready to cut almost. So they just have to be converted to an to a FCM file so that it works with a brother scan and cut. So your DXF files, are, to be quite honest, we don't really use them. Um, I'm sure some people must because it's an option here. But if you know about DXS, DXF files, you can import those. And the FCM files, they're the brother scan and cut ones, the ones that actually work on the, on the scan and cut itself. But most people will probably be importing SVG files into here. So you can go choose file. And you can see I've got an SVG one here. It's a fairly simple one. I'm just going to import that one and go OK. And there you go, it's picked it up beautifully. Sometimes it won't, it won't see the file, but in general it, it picks up these files pretty well. Okay, so the file's already there, I can resize this if I wanted to, and we would be ready to go. So what I'm going to show you now is how to save your files. Okay, so we've got one here ready to go, I've just imported this one. Because it's an SVG, we said it was an SVG, when I save it, this software is going to actually convert that automatically to a .fcm file, which is the brother file format. So this is great. So all I need to do is come up here and give it a title. So I'm just going to call it star. And I've got 
different options for saving. I can save it to my projects and here up here we've got um, my project bin here. Up here that's where you access your projects. Or I can save it to my computer. So I'm going to do both. So I'll click, just typed in star and now I'm going to click on the um, save button here. Now you'll notice Brother has called this overwrite this project. I'm not sure why they've said that. Um, pretty much it just means save. You're going to be saving it. So click on save and you can see saving this project is completed. So it's pretty much saved over here to my projects and we'll go and have a look at that in a minute to see if it has. Otherwise if I'm saving to my computer I just click on the download button here and says select the method for sending data. You can see here we've got download to PC and this one the scan and cut function. Now this um, is not available on here just as yet. I'm just going to go with the download to PC. So click on that one and it's automatically, I'm on a Mac so it just automatically pops over into my downloads folder. You might want to right click and go download link file as to save it directly to a USB or if you're on a Windows computer you can you, you probably have a different option there but something similar it'll be saved to a particular folder and you can do that or save to your USB if you like. So there are your options for saving. Okay so what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you the other options along here. We've gone through this one that's just creating a new project. You click it and, and you'll get a new um, scan uh, mat showing on the screen. This one is your, is your save function, so you're saving to your projects, and we'll quickly go over there and have a look at those now. So I'll click on my projects, leave page, and you can see we've come to that tab and that there's my star there. It's showing that it has been saved, which is great. I'm going to go back and just show you the other options here. This one was we've done was the image tracing. This one was importing the SVG files. This one is simply your pointer. I mean, that's just getting your pointer so you can select things. Now this one here is the path tool. So you can actually create your own shapes. If you just select that and click, click, click with your mouse however you want and come back to that one, you've basically created a shape. You can also create open shapes. So you can um, come back and click on it. Open shapes is what I mean by that. Now you're always, when you're using this tool, just be aware that you need to um, click, if you want to finish this shape, you have to click and then click again. So if I come back here, otherwise you get this option where it's just flying around the screen here and you don't know what to do. You just click on that shape again if you want to finish it up. Click on the little circle like that and that will close the shape for you. You've also got um, this drawing tool here, I'll just delete those, where you can just draw, basically draw. If you're great at drawing, great. I'm not particularly, so there, so it's just created a little blobby shape. Okay, these are your undo and redo buttons. That's your trash bin, which is good if you've got a shape um, on the screen. All you have to do is you know, have this shape selected and click the trash button there. And that was your properties one. We've been through that quite a bit. Okay, so we've pretty much gone through the basics of using the Scan and Cut camera software. I will be going through more detailed options in future, for instance, the text option and, and various different welding options and so forth in, in future. So stay tuned for those. But just check below um, our playlist, Brother Scan and Cut playlist for that. We've got a heap of videos on there already. So just subscribe to our channel um, for more of those.